In this video, I'll be doing a review of Makulu Linux at version 4.2. Now, I've seen a few screenshots of this distro for its development, and I just thought, hmm, okay, it didn't seem that special. I mean, the developer clearly liked using pictures of hippos as wallpaper, but hmm, okay, beyond that. Um, but no, I'm a little bit wrong here. What they've got here is Nextface Desktop with quite a few transparency effects added, a nice icon theme, it's a nice job done on theming, and there's a lot of proprietary software pre-installed. Now, in some ways, this distro would be ideal for new users. However, <laughs> its Achilles heel is their installer is a bit more complicated than the standard uh, Debian or Ubuntu installer. And I'm not going to say it's the worst installer I've ever used. It's not by a long way. However, it did seem to keep asking repeatedly which location, language settings I wanted to use. Now, why you couldn't just say, I'm in England, so let's have some standard British and English language settings, and where the time zone would be as well. No, I had to keep setting that for every point in the installer. And you also have gparted to do the partitioning, and there's nothing automated there at all. It doesn't just say, oh, would you like this to be a default here and just go for a, one partition for root and home and another partition for swap? No, you had to manually do all of that. So it's a little bit more difficult than the standard Debian or Ubuntu installer, which could put off new users. But let's take more of a look at it. So starting with the layout of the desktop, I've got a Conkey script running it in the top right hand side. And there's quite a few Conkey scripts pre-installed on the system. I'll take a look at those in a moment. We've got a few icons on the desktop. Next to the Whistler menu, the Software Manager, Terminal, Chromium, and Funar File Manager. On the right hand side, we've got Volume Control, Weather Indicator. This is set to South Africa by default. We've got FlareGet Download Manager. Confirmation that the system is up to date, network manager, and time and date. But there's no desktop switcher in the bottom panel. The developers have done quite a nice job on the theming of the system. Now if I go and look in the settings manager, in appearance, you can see there are quite a few themes included. Makulu DeLorean, I've um, got quite a few colours there. Red, purple, green, dark, blue. Yeah, there's quite a few there. I quite like the dark one. It does look rather nice with this distro. And we have a custom icon set. I mentioned about the Conky scripts. So in Conky Manager, you can see there are absolutely loads of scripts here. I have not even been through all of them. I was just playing around, selected a few of them, and thought, well, what does it look like? And like, there you go. You can enable it and disable it quite quick and easy. But I did find one that looked half decent, so I've just enabled that. But as to what the rest of them are like, I don't know. Opening up Chromium, it's taken me to my last open page, which I was messing around with my new website. This is still under heavy development at the moment, but you can certainly get copies of all the wallpapers. I've uploaded a fair few of them. Anyway, that's quidsup.net. But what I was going to show you was the default homepage on Chromium. And this is quite a nice effect here. I've not seen this done before in a distro. So I've got links to the homepage for Makulu. Yeah, Spatra beat me to it on the review. But yeah, under download, scroll all the way down, I've got Wine Full, optional but highly recommended. It gives you a large selection of the add ons pre installed with Wine. So they've got DirectX, Net Framework, MSXML, and Runtime Environments. It's quite a hefty download, but. Once you've got it there, it could be a bit easier to get some of the Windows software up and running on your system. If you go into the menu and look at under Other, we've got the Wine Configurator, Wine Tricks, and the Wine Windows Program Loader. So they certainly have made it easier for new users to get Windows software installed in Linux. It's not necessarily easy. It certainly is if the application is rated at Platinum on Wine. Otherwise, you could be in for a world of pain. I'll take a look at the applications that they've pre-installed, because I did mention that there was quite a few proprietary applications on here. Under Accessories, quite a selection there. So under Games, so we've got G Dream Chess, Eltris, Simsu, Steam, and Mahjong. So that's a few smaller games, and then you've got Steam to install whatever games you want to purchase from Valve. Under Graphics, we've got Photo XX for the 
is that a photo manager or a picture editor? I think it does a bit of both. We've got LibreOffice Draw and Pinter. Internet, we've got Chromium for the web browser. Deluge for the BitTorrent client. We've got Dropbox for cloud storage. FlareGet Download Manager. Thunderbird for email. We've got Mumble Chat, NitroShare and Pigeon for Instant Messenger. Multimedia, we have Deadbee for the music player. We've got FF Multi Converter, Minitube, Nero Linux, and Nero Linux Express. Ah, interesting. Radio Tray, VLC Media Player, and my screencaster of choice, Voco Screen. Let's open up Nero Linux. Hmm, interesting. I didn't know that they did a Linux version of Nero. Under Office, we have Adobe Reader 9 for the PDF reader dictionary and the full install of LibreOffice, which includes the base, calc, draw, impress and writer. Settings. Yeah, quite a few settings there. And I'm not going to read those out. System. Bleach bit. Hmm. And quite a few other system applications. Oh, got Grub Customizer. Ah, nice. That's a rather nice handy program to tinker with the Grub screen. I've got a very old video on that one, but it's still kind of valid. And for installing applications, we've got a Linux Mint style software manager. There we go. I think this is a system for newer users, but probably not my distro of choice. So if I was going for an XFCE based system, I would probably go for Solid X. Here's what I thought of Makulu Linux version 4.2. The theming does look quite nice and there's a large selection of software, so that would suit new users. However, there's quite a few proprietary applications pre-installed, so anyone who wants only free open source software, no, it's not going to be a distro for you. On the downside though, the system installer might be a bit too complicated for new users. I'm sure if there was a video guide on there, actually it would be quite easy to do then. You could just follow it and it wouldn't be that bad. And it only comes in 32-bit PAE only. Now my opinion on this is that if you have a higher end machine, a 64-bit operating system is going to run faster than the 32-bit, so that's always my preference. I've got a higher end machine, so I'm going to run a 64-bit operating system on it. Mind you, I even run 64-bit on a rather weak netbook, and it still worked fine. The boot up speed was quite quick for a Debian-based distro. It had low memory usage, although that was a 32-bit system, so that is going to be lower than the 64-bit would. And I did have one issue of the updates. I traced that to a single DEB package, being unable to display a new message in the GUI installer. But it works fine after that. So overall, I've given this distro 75%. So thanks for watching. See you later.